What's up guys, Imza with Light Lab here. I wanted to show off my third iteration of the lemur interface that I have been writing for Resolume over the past couple years. I wrote my interface for M Audio Torque and a little bit of stuff for FL Studio. I've never been big on releasing my interfaces on line.net because pretty much I only want to release them if they're perfect. And this one I think is really good. It's not completely 100% done, but I was really excited about it and I wanted to show it off to not only the community, but my colleagues and my friends that have been wondering why I've been holed up in my room the past couple of days. So instead of messing around with two-way MIDI, which I never really got working properly, I made the jump to OSC. Not really sure what I was afraid of because OSC is really easy to map. And since it run, it maps to individual controls, I can just walk into a venue, set my IP, and I can work. No need to right-click on all my controls to MIDI map them, which is a waste of time. It speaks two ways, so that means if I select a clip here, it's selected in Resolume. If I select a different clip in Resolume, it reflects that on the tablet. It also does the same thing for DEX, and the cool thing about selecting DEX is that it doesn't light up until the deck is completely loaded because I can't select clips until the deck is loaded. Since our laptops have solid states, that's not that big of a deal because it takes like two seconds to load, but it's still a useful feature that I just kind of found out. Down here on the layer select, a lot of the controls have a monitor on them so you can see how fast or how much opacity anything has. So that way if I bring this down and I do it fast, it's not quite at zero that's still showing up a little bit on the composition. So I can move that down to zero and we're good there, it's gone. Um, the clip box here does a lot of interesting things. I can make it go backwards instead of forwards. I can randomize it. I can pause it. I can scrub and go to a certain part of the video that I want to. Let's put it back on play. I can change it to back and forth instead of loop seamlessly in case I've got some videos that are 20 seconds long and I notice they don't loop perfectly or at all, which happens a lot. Um, I can change the speed. I can snap the speed back to 100%. I can take out certain colors. Here's something that is very useful. Let's say um, I've got a DJ logo here. I can scale it to the size that I need it to be on the screen, snap it back to 100%. And a lot of times we will have setups where we'll have some LEDs on the bottom for a skirt in front of the DJ and some LEDs flying behind the DJ. Well, now we can change the anchor to put it on the top or the bottom, wherever. This works for whatever clip is selected. Um, I've added a slider instead of a button here, so instead of bumping from 1 through 12 to 13 through 24, now there's a handy dandy scroller, so I can scroll between my clips. Currently only goes to 27, but that is because it's a pain in the ass to map four buttons at the same time per column. I'll eventually go to 32 and maybe 64, but most of our compositions don't even run that high. So, I don't know, we'll see. Let's get out of this. Everything, like I said, everything is two-way communicative. So if I change things in Resolume with my mouse and keyboard, those are reflected on the tablet. Um, I've got your usual strobe, your whiteout. I added a, another one called Rainbow Strobe, which is kind of fun, really bright. If I want to blind people, make a drop really intense, there I go. Blackout as well, BPM tap on the bottom here. Um, I don't know if I already showed off the battery monitor, but this has been plugged in all day, so it's at 100%, but this battery monitor tells us how much better we've got without having to get to the Android menu. Can't even see the Android menu, but whatever you get the idea. It's the swipe down from the top menu that Android has in their OS. You don't need to see that anymore. Now for the bread and butter, the new effects section. So we've got a hue selector here, hue opacity, and a hue speed. So let's turn the hue opacity up and maybe pick a more colorful clip. This will work. And I can choose which hue I want 
to be on the effect at that time. Now currently this goes for the entire composition. I'll probably add it for each individual layer. Haven't quite gotten to that fun, fun part yet. Um, so if I change the hue speed, it will scroll through the hue in a rotate. You can tell how fast it's going. You can blind people with unicorn rainbow bark if you want, which there might be a need for that sometime, but I like to keep things low and slow at a 10 or 5%. So let's turn it off for now and put it back to zero. Um, and we'll pick a different clip here. We'll choose this one. Uh, no, we'll choose this one. So each layer has mirror one and mirror two where mirror one is horizontal and mirror two is vertical. If you turn both on it, you can get a lot of really cool, really simple effects. You can even make them opaque to where it looks even more crazy and reflective. I prefer to have them just at 100% or 0%, but you do whatever you want. And I hadn't added anything to these later effects because I added the same dashboard for every single layer. And I added some effects for those layers as well. And I really just saw no need to add these to affect the whole composition if I can do it on a per layer basis. So once again, there's a uh, Mirror 1 and Mirror 2. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer, aren't I? Yeah, Layer 1. There's Mirror 1. There's Mirror 2. And then I added some other effects. There's a shake. Maybe in case I wanted the DJ logo to not be affected by the shake or the mirror. Then that looks, that looks great. I don't have anything on Link 4. Oh, I guess I do. I have a tunnel on Link 4. So now I can have a nice looking tunnel with a DJ logo up front. Adjust a little bit to go up top. Make it a little bit larger. And then Wave Warp will go on that bottom layer. So I even added some effects to the mask layer, which I honestly haven't even played with to see what they would look like. But let's, let's choose a mask and we'll choose something uh, a little bit brighter. Let's go with this crazy looking rainbow one. So that's gonna be on our bottom layer. I gotta turn wave warp off for the bottom layer in general. And then if I wanna put something on for the mask, let's see, I'm gonna go back to nine on this one. Oops, that's the wrong one. So if I wanna play with some effects on the mask layer, I've got a mirror, which gives it a totally different mask. It looks great. Not sure what Link 3 does. Or maybe that one's not quite working yet. It doesn't look like it is. Ah, that's Twitch. And I'm on the wrong layer anyway. Ah, I didn't have anything set for Link 3 or Link 4. But Link 5 is Wave Warp, where that can do some crazy things with your mask. But your layer underneath is not affected, so it's still the wonderful psychedelic thing that you're used to. Uh, that's pretty much it for now. I do plan to add more features in here. Um, the cool thing about the layer effects is I can take whatever I want and stick it on the link dashboard and then it'll work however I need it to work. And then, yeah, so you can modify your effects from the computer in real time, go back out in the crowd and play with them and do all kinds of crazy cool stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, come and say hi to me if you see me out in a show on the tablet. I will be more than happy to let you play around on the tablet because it is definitely as much fun as it looks whenever I'm doing it in the crowd at a show.